the tower. The Lord of the hosts of the mighty, Tower of Babel, Tensor Firet of Nethingus, War, Revolution, the lightning flash of enlightenment, Fire of heaven, re-establishment of truth. King Ziyu Sudra gripped the crumbling battlements of Uruk's highest ziggurat as the dark winds howled. Lightning's blue-white fingers raked across the brooding heavens, thunder rolling across the land in answering challenge. This was no mere weather, but a sign of wrongness. Below, the streets teemed with the masses as they hauled their livelihoods toward high ground. All for naught, no one sensed what was gestating behind the veil of storm. There in the eastern murk, a shadow like no other swelled against the shore. A mountain of water towered higher than any peak, water teeming upon water in ceaseless stacks of primal, inexorable force. In a flash of lightning he saw the spires of temples and farms alike, devoured under the waves. The unmaking of Uruk, the toil of generations, testament to mankind's sovereignty under the heavens. Undone, as if it had never stood, mankind's reach, gainsaid. Cracks split the stones under Zeusudra's feet as the tower buckled against the flood. As he was pulled into the ravening depths, a flash of white caught his eye. A lone figure aloft on wings of purest feathers, silhouetted against the roiling clouds as it flew ever upwards, seeking the sun. Darkness stuck him. In the silence left behind, the gods began shaping anew from the clay and bones. To obtain perfection, all things must be annihilated, as crops must fall to reap new harvest. The ultimate reality, which is perfection, is nothingness. Hence all manifestations, however glorious are mere stains. Troy laid waste so the Greeks might rise, its people freed from city walls' confines, as a soul unbound explores untrod paths that from their dust new shapes of beauty bloom. The greatest work from rubble rises fair, its ruler's plan beyond our seeing wrought. The lightning flash is the power drawn down from the heavens above by the magician's arts. It is the blade wielded by the charioteer's hand, the scepter that rules the emperor's land, the force which turns fortune's wheel in its ceaseless change. It is the trampling in the onward march of the horse of death. The shining flame of the hermit's lamp, whose light sets ablaze spent harvests to seed dreams anew. In the magician's garden germs of thought take root and spring, bringing inward visions into earthly manifestation. On the emperor's throne all power it endows, imposing order over chaos. Ordo ab chow. A serpent lies coiled with a dove bearing an olive branch beneath the golden eye of Horus which sees all things in their vain glory pass. It is Ksnubis, the lion serpent. War, will to live and the will to die, intertwined. Horus's gaze is one with the eye of Shiva, on the opening of which, the universe is destroyed. All things that breathe great and small, ashes on fate's wheel, known escape his all-consuming sight. His skin, they say, bears cinders of worlds dead. In his hands dances life's mysteries to create or unmake at home. Ares, whom Hera bore in secret to the son of Kronos. Strength and fury flow through his mighty limbs like warring rivers, while Athena weaves the stratagems of conquest, known endure when Ares with burning eyes strides forth, unbreakable in the red slaughter of shields, where blood soaks dusty plains he delights bringing low the proud and strong with his ashen spear. Sister to the destroyer is Eris, strife incarnate, who is the whisper of upswelling rage and vengeance yet unsated. It was flower adorned discord, who sowed between Priam's sons and Greeks that fair fruit, sorrow that poured death nine long years, till the ash-dark fields and riven tombs of Ilium drank their fill of lifeblood and tears of mother's rent. Not chaste was he the god of war, who shared his seed with Aphrodite, the goddess of love and also a goddess of war. From their joining came winged Eros, 
whose arrows enflame quarrels between mortals hotter than Forge's breath. Ever attendant at his fiery chariot wheels stand his sons, twins Dimas and Phobos, fear and fright, who strike dread through legions massed for the harvest of blood. Round mighty Mars they whirl their lonely rounds in the firmament, moons that move mortal tides. Southward in shadows dwells Dis, Stygian wind to Ares red rage, his name whispers of doom and unraveling, the expulsion from light, realms of ash where weep the souls on the banks of Styx, and above amidst the twelve he shares with Ares' lordship, grim over the scorpion's sign, whose sting bears fate. The tower reaches to the realms above, as heaven's axis joining earth below, stands the cosmic tree of life its walls entwining beneath the roots of life's spreading bough. Within its womb, Earth Mother bears all things that creep and crawl from the darkness of gestation up to day's eternal light and veil. The lightning-struck tower, Tower of Gnosis, the shining summit climbed by the pilgrim's tireless seal, the crown of Darth's pinnacle where Zeus's bolts of lightning flash, it strikes not to destroy, but to annihilate the darkness of ignorance, the flash of inspiration that tears down the structure of false reasoning, the javelin of enlightenment, the all-penetrating flash of truth, the union of wisdom and understanding, the wings of the spirit with the body of earth made one. Like a bird whose wings now coupling soar past clouds, man leaves behind what once concealed the bright world's shroud. The flaming brand of Zeus lit reason's torch, revealing what long lay veiled beneath shadow and in, gazing out onto the starry fields beyond. Yet passion stills the fluttering wings of mortal thought, and pride bears down who drink deep wisdom's heady wine, to fettered to heaven's gift. At the apex, the tower's burning crown falls like proud Lucifer cast down, seizing power but ascending not. The tower's burning crest toppled is the lightning's descent, the finger of fate bent to trace the mortal paths below, a thousand paths scattered in service of one. Thought's arrow let fly. Within the theater of mind lightning weaves, a spark, projection of the spiritual sun. As Krishna once told Arjuna on fields of Karakshatra, among weapons, I am the thunderbolt. Heavenly fire lights mind's vista with thoughts descending like bolts from on high. True knowledge, Purusha, the I am, consciousness from which Prakriti evolves and merges back into Purusha on dissolution. Then Purusha alone remains. I am the mouth when of the breath of life. I am the all-devouring one wherein to all things return. Beginning and end is my holy name, for the mouth is a sign of my self-duplication, whereby I testify to myself of myself. I am the word of life which exiteth all beginnings, the word which hath its own beginning in victory, and its completion in splendor, and is the balance between them. It is written that the word of the Lord faileth not, and how else should it be? Of a truth, I am victorious before ever the battle is joined, and the continuance of my life is an effulgent splendor throughout eternity. I am, faults pass, from me they go, and again they come to me. Their returning is what men call destruction. Be not deceived thereby. I tear down only to build anew. Verily destruction is the foundation of existence, and the tearing down thou seest is but the assembling of material for a grand destruction. Therefore is it written, Man doth not live by bread only, but by all that proceedeth out of the pH of tetragrammaton. Not by the part, the will, but by all which proceedeth from the mouth of the Lord. Deluded are they who say, Man liveth by the mercy of the Lord. Know ye that by the balance of mercy and severity is the continuance of every life, yea, and of this whole universe.